G'day all, welcome to another Cuda Toot. So, let's get on to something practical, shall we? Uh, let's look at embarrassingly parallel algorithms. Uh, this toot, the next one, and probably the next one after that, we'll be looking at a single algorithm converting from C++ to the GPU and seeing just how fast we can make it with CUDA. It should be good. Anyway, parallel algorithms can be defined in terms of how much interaction has to take place between the threads. Uh, so a lot of algorithms, no interaction at all has to take place between the threads, and every thread can get on with its task completely independently without communicating to the other threads. Uh, these algorithms are called embarrassingly parallel, which I guess kind of means that they're very easy to, you know, make parallel uh, if you're given a serial version of them. Uh, they're usually but not necessarily simpler than algorithms where the threads need to interact. Yeah, they're not necessarily. I mean, there's no real reason that they're simpler, but they tend to be. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is that they're not actually embarrassing. They're actually really, really good. And a lot of people prefer to call these algorithms pleasingly parallel. So if you've got a problem that you're working on and you figure out an embarrassingly parallel solution to it, uh, that's not embarrassing. That's really good. That's excellent. That's really what you want to do, actually. Yeah, the more embarrassingly parallel you can make an algorithm uh, for the GPU, the better, really. Uh, anyway, a lot of people call them pleasingly parallel instead. Uh, they're extremely useful and they can become very complicated. Yeah, there's nothing simple or embarrassing about them, really. Anyway, just wanted to make that clear. So today's toot, what we're going to do is just look at a C++ uh, version of an algorithm because I think that realistically this is probably what you're going to be doing in uh, CUDA. You're going to have an algorithm somewhere typed out that you want to speed up, maybe some bottleneck in your code. Um, yeah, but it's probably going to be in a language like C++ or maybe some other language, I don't know. Uh, but we're going to convert this algorithm in C++ uh, from the CPU over to the GPU using CUDA. And we'll probably convert it next toot. And that'll just be a basic conversion. But after that, uh, we'll have a bit of a think about the GPU's resources and see if we can actually get an even bigger uh, performance gain. Anyway, on to the story. What is it? What's the algorithm? What are we doing here? Uh, you are Porky Waters. You're a private eye. <laughs> uh, my brother drew this ridiculous picture, and he said that it was <laughs> he said that it was Porky Waters, and he's a private eye. And then he drew his boss yelling at him. It was just great. Now, uh, if I find the picture, I'll put it in the next toot. I really wanted to find it, but I couldn't find this picture of <laughs> Porky Waters. Anyway, one fine day in the middle of the spring. Uh, your boss walks in and he gives you some code, and he wants this code to go at least 10 times faster. So that's our challenge. Uh, we're going to have a look at some C++ code, and we want to code a CUDA version that goes at least 10 times faster. And the problem is this. Um, it's the nearest neighbor problem, really. We're going to be given a, an array of uh, float3 structures with the uh, X, Y, and Z floating point structures, an array of 3D points, pretty much. And for every one of the points in that array, we want to find the nearest neighbor to the other points in the array. Uh, the closest neighbor, or nearest neighbor problem that's sometimes called, can actually be solved by creating trees, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to use a brute force algorithm. Uh, but you can look at uh, 3D trees or KD trees to uh, reduce the number of comparisons needed to find the nearest points. Uh, okay, so here's a bit of a visual example. So we've got, say, three points just here. I've plotted these points as circles on a 2D plane, though we'll actually be doing this with uh, 3D. Anyway, the idea is that we've got an indices array, and we want to fill that array with uh, whatever the corresponding closest point is. So, for instance, uh, indices 0 has to hold the index of the closest point to point 0.0. Uh, the closest point to point zero, you can see up here, it's pretty clear that that's point two. So indice, indices zero gets two. Uh, indices one is the index of whatever point is closest to point one. And you can see pretty easily there that that's point two. So uh, indices one also gets two. Uh, and the final one is zero. So the closest point to point two is point zero. Yeah, and that's what we're doing. So we're just filling this indices array just here. Uh, it seems pretty trivial, but I think it's going to be a really good exploration of uh, some some really interesting CUDA.
Alright, so the C++ code looks something a little like this, and we'll have a look at the performance of this at the end of the tube. Uh, I should do a little bit of explanation first, just in case it's not terribly clear, but the float3 points uh, pointer is the array of points that we're checking the distances between. Uh, the int star indices is the indexes that we're checking, So, and the count is how many points there are. Um, both points and indices have count elements in them. They're arrays of count length. <laughs> that sounds strange. Uh, if count's zero, then we just get out of here. That's yeah. If count's less than one, then you know we, we've got that algorithm really. Uh, but if it's not less than one, then basically this serial brute force version of the algorithm, all that it does is uh, it's two nested for loops, or one nested for loop and one outer for loop. Um, I've iterated through every point in the array. And for each of the points in the array, I've iterated through every other point in the array, and uh, I just check the distance between every single point and every other point. And if the distance is the smallest, then we record that as this uh, current points index. I think it's pretty clear. I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully it's not too hard, but... Yeah, this is the C++ version of what we want to make parallel and put onto the GPU, see how fast we can get it. And that's the code that our boss hands us. Yeah, Polky, this is the code that your boss handed you. Um, alrighty, so before we get started, or before we look at the C++ in uh, Visual Studio, we should have a bit of a chat about float3 data type. Yeah, I don't think we went through this. It's pretty simple, though. It's just a structure with uh, three floats, X, Y, and Z. Uh, so these, it's pretty natural to use to define 3D points, exactly as we're doing here. Uh, we should also look at the distance between two points. So the distance between two points is a bit of Pythagoras, I think. Um, two points in 3D space. Yeah, so if the first point is described as x sub 1, y sub 1, and z sub 1, and if the second point is described as x sub 2, y sub 2, and z sub 2, then the distance between the points is a single uh, floating point value, and it's calculated by doing this. Yeah, so you sort of find the distance between x sub 1 and x sub 2, and you square it. You find the distance between the two y's, and you square it. You find the distance between the two z values, and you square it. You add all those up together, and you take the square root. And that's going to give you the distance between two points in 3D space. You probably knew already. I don't know. Um, what I think is really cool is that uh, you can actually do this with as many dimensions as you want. So you could find the distance between two points in, say, 150 dimension space really, really easily. Yeah, it's interesting. It's pretty hard to think about, though. 100 dimensions. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, and the formula for the standard deviation, if you've ever looked at stats, the standard deviation is, is basically this, except um, the second point is the average point. Anyway, we're not talking about stats, so I don't want. Yeah, we don't have to go there. Oh yeah, this is just another little story. Just before we go over and have a look at the um, code, but there's a really, really good book called Algorithms in C by a guy called Robert Sedgwick. Here it is. Here, I don't know if you can see that. Um, but I read this book all the time, or I've got it here as a reference all the time, and uh, it's it's just about the best reference on data structures and algorithms that you can possibly find. And there there is a modern version, which is called, I think, Algorithms Version 4 or something like that, and it's based on Java. But a lot of the algorithm stuff, you know, it's the same. It doesn't matter what language you're, <laughs> what language you're programming in. But um, that's available for free, so you might want to look that up if you like. Uh, it's from the Princeton University. So this guy, Robert Sedgwick, who wrote the book, uh, he's a professor at Princeton. Um, anyway, there's a chapter on KD trees. So I was looking up this book here, just seeing what uh, old Robert Sedgwick has to say about uh, nearest neighbor problem. And it was pretty interesting, but I did want a little bit more what's that? of an explanation. So uh, I went to YouTube and I typed in KD tree. And bam, right there at the top of the list was uh, Robert Sedgwick himself uh, explaining the topic. So if you like, if you want um, a slightly more sort of intelligent uh, solution to the nearest neighbor problem, have a look at this video on KD Trees. I think it's called that. If you type that into YouTube, three KD Trees, uh, you should get a video on uh, a better or more elegant way to solve the nearest neighbor. But uh, we're using brute force. Good stuff. Alrighty, so before we go, 
Well, before we stop, I just want to show you the front end and the C++ version in action. So this is the front end that your boss handed you, Porky. <laughs> um, nothing much to it. It creates an array of 10,000 points, so it's quite a lot of points, really. Yeah, quite a lot of points. Um, I've just filled the array with random values using rand, as I'm often inclined to do. Quite like rand, really. Um, and I've run through the find closest CPU, which is the algorithm that we just saw in the slides. Um, I've run through that 20 times and taken the fastest to be the time that we've got to beat. Yeah, so this is it just here. This is the algorithm that we're going to transform into CUDA. Make a kernel, pretty much. We'll just make find closest GPU and see how fast we can make it. Anyway, if we just hit play, let's see what time we've got to beat. So that's... Those are the times there, those milliseconds. That's what we've got to beat. We've got to get ten times faster than that by using the GPU. And it's the fastest time that we want to beat, so 439 milliseconds. Yeah, that's what we want to beat. And these are the results down here. So point number zero was closest to point number 1982. I wouldn't have thought so either, but there you go. Okay, I might just slowly scroll down here in case folks want to type it out. If I remember, I'll put this up on the website so you don't have to type it out. The um, main.cpp and find closest cpu.h. Um, and this is the algorithm that we looked at in the slide. So this is the C++ version of it. Yeah, just a nested for loop. Nothing much to it, really. Brute force. Brute force solution. Um, okay, so one thing that I do want to say before we go is that there is a really quick optimization which will get a good speed increase that we can do right now in C++ and our boss will be very, very impressed. Although I think, I think he'll still be angry. He's just, he yells all the time. Anyway, what we can do is uh, remove this square root just here. Yeah, so the distance between two points uh, you need to take the square root, but we're not actually looking for the distance between two points. Uh, no, we're actually just looking for whatever the smallest distance is. So if we get rid of that square root, uh, the smallest distance will still be the smallest distance. It doesn't matter if you take the square root or not. So, let's see, what did we have before? Like 437 was the time? The fastest time? Let's see what it is now. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, 182, so that's much quicker. Now, if your boss is really mean, he's going to say that this is the time that you've got to get 10 times faster than. So you've got to get 18 milliseconds or less, or he's not going to be happy. <laughs> if your boss is really kind, then it's the, uh, the original time with square root, which was like 4.37. Um, I think he's really mean. I don't want to say, but I think he's mean. Yeah. Anyway, next shoot we'll look at uh, coding a CUDA version. A straight... Uh, what would you say, like a straight translation of this code into CUDA. Should be good. Alright, see ya.